please click on the red subscribe button and subscribe to my youtube channel then click on the bell icon for notifications good morning good afternoon good evening and good night ladies and gentlemen from wherever you are watching from i greet you all you are once again welcome to my channel so not to waste much of your time let us go into the details of our today's video in today's video we are going to be talking about the apc vice presidential candidate shetima and his trending outfit few days ago the mba had a national conference in abuja where political aspirants like presidential candidates were invited to grace the occasion labor's presidential candidate that is labor party presidential candidate mr peter b was there live ateko abubakar pdp presidential candidate was there live but apc presidential candidate that is ahmed tinubu was not able to grace the occasion so he had to send his vice that his uh, the person that is running with him shetima to represent him at the mba national conference so during the conference shetima wore an outfit that was very very hilarious he wore a sneaker with very long tie and coat so his appearance they created a lot of amusement as people were laughing at him so after the conference people were asking questions saying why did you choose to dress like this a whole national convention hosted by the mba that is the nigerian bar association and this is an opportunity for you to dress smart so that you can be able to attract audience attract crowd why do you choose to dress like this According to Shetima, he said that the crowd are hostile on him and for that reason he decided to wear that sneaker and that long tight so as to snuff on them. Here is the video. Enjoy it. For the NBA conference. NBA conference was held at the Echo Hotel. It was largely funded by the Lagos State Government, the APC Government of Lagos State. Subsequently, they moved to Eco Atlantic City, a product of an idea conceived by Ashwa Jibola Ahmed. When I sent my record team, One of the presidential candidates, he funded his agents, they held meetings for three consecutive nights to commend this chief. Mm -hmm. When I was told that it's a hostile crowd, I'm a banker, I was trained by one of the best bankers mm -hmm. in the world. I'm a Jim Obia boy. I deliberately wore sneakers to smoke at them. <laughs> You can see the kind of attire that he was putting on. It was very, very hilarious. This man was supposed to dress very smart so that he would attract the audience, but he dressed in such a hilarious manner. But according to him, he purposely dressed like that so as to snub on hostile uh, crowd because he felt that people are not appreciating him. People are not supporting him because he knew that if he comes out to talk, people will definitely laugh at him. And so for that reason, he decided to wear an attire that would give them that impression to laugh. So ladies and gentlemen, not to waste much of your time, we are heading straight to our next news. So the next news we have here is about a human rights advocate known as Efiong Enibeye, who was imprisoned for one month in a quiet bomb. This man committed no crime. The only crime he committed was advocating for innocent Nigerians who are illegally, unjustly being sentenced to prison for crimes they do not commit. And so for this reason, 
the Akwaibo State Governor accused him of contempt of court and for that reason he was imprisoned for over one month. Whereas this man has not done anything wrong to warrant such unjustly imprisonment. So this young man spent one month in prison and he was subdued to severe torture and inhuman treatment. He was incarcerated while in prison, whereas he has not committed any crime. So the day that he was released, a lot of people came out in masses to support him, to show solidarity to him because he's like a hero, someone that is defending people, someone that is advocating for the less privileged, those people that doesn't have anybody to speak for them. And because of what he's doing, they now have to imprison him. Now some senior advocates in Nigeria have come out to condemn this act by the uh, uh, Akwaibom state government by imprisoning a man that has not done any wrong in the society. The only thing he did was to advocate for innocent people, people that have not done any crime. Because you know that prisons in Nigeria are jam-packed with so many innocent people, people that have not done anything wrong, but yet they were in prison. We all know that the Nigerian judiciary has been compromised because in Nigeria, if you don't have name, if you don't know somebody that knows somebody, you are on your own. And so these senior advocates in Nigeria have come out to condemn the act by the Akwaibo state government for imprisoning a young, vibrant man who has done nothing wrong only to advocate for the uh, right of innocent people in Nigeria. I'm going to play the video for you to see what is actually going on and what I'm talking about. Watch the video. Members of the civil society organizations and supporters of jailed human rights lawyer Inibehe Efyong wait patiently outside the Uyo Correctional Center in the capital city of Akwaibom State for his release from the facility. As soon as he joined their ranks, they give him a hero's welcome by marching through the streets of Uyo. The human rights lawyer, who was the defense counsel in a libel suit filed by the state governor, Mr. Udom Emmanuel, against another lawyer, Leo Ekweyong, was convicted for contempt of court by the presiding judge and sent to Kodek Pene Correctional Center. The Honorable Chief Judge of Akwaibom, whom I re whose office I respect, knows in her conscience that I never acted in any insolent manner, that I never disrespected the court. But let me state it clearly and unequivocally, because the Nibel that has just come out of incarceration is beaming with fire. It's beaming with fire to fight for the common people of this country. And no oppressor can quench that fire. On his part, the chairman of the Civil Society Organizations Forum in the state faults the action of the court alleging that due process was not followed. We, we, we consulted with lawyers and um, you know, very senior lawyers uh, who told us what the process would be. And so usually the, the, the chief judge would have uh, brought him in the dock, asked him to derobe and get in the dock and then tell the court why he wouldn't be sentenced, you know, to, to yeah, uh, for contempt of court. Uh, that wasn't done. But the senior special assistant to Governor Udom Emmanuel on judiciary matters rules out government influence in the case. Let me emphasize this. Inibe Ejong is a victim of lack of mentorship. Since he left law school, he has not been mentored by anybody. He has not learned the very simple act of telling the court as the court pleases. So where he is now is for him to learn how to say as the court pleases. Lawyers don't argue with the court. Lawyers don't quarrel with the court. Lawyers don't insult the judges. We don't insult the bench. So Inibe Ejong has not learned a simple character of telling the court as the court pleases. And that is what he's going to learn where he is now. Another human rights lawyer, Mr. Femi Falana, describes his release as commendable, but vows to challenge the violations of his human rights in court. The violations of his uh, human rights will be fought, and we're going, to make, we're going to teach some lessons 
from the experience, his brutal experience. Governor Odom Emanuel had sued Leo Ekpeyong, a lawyer, for defamation of character over a publication in which he accused the governor of buying judgment from the 2019 National Assembly Election Tribunal. So you cannot see that the man has not done anything wrong. He hasn't committed any crime. And yet, this man was imprisoned for one solid month. And finally, when he regained his freedom, people came in masses to celebrate him. To celebrate him as a hero because he went to prison just for the sake of fighting for people's rights in Nigeria. So ladies and gentlemen, not to waste much of your time, we're going to enter into the last news of today. So this news about Buari. Buari is a local government area in the FCT, that is the Federal Capital Territory in Nigeria. So the community were protesting because according to them, a new king was given to them who is not from their tribe, whereas they had a king already. The youth of Buari came out in masses protesting, calling on the government to intercede, to interfere in their problems, to look into their demands that they don't want another king. They already have a king who is ruling them, a king that is from their tribe, a king that understands their culture and tradition, a king that knows everything about them. They already have a king. So why are they giving them a new king? So according to this community, they are agitating, calling on the government to remove this new king given to them, that they cannot afford to have two kings in one community. So that is why they are calling on the government to interfere in their problems. According to them, the new king given to them does not understand their culture. The new king is not from their tribe, rather, he is a settler, a stranger living among them. So how come they will bring them a king that is not from their tribe, whereas they have a king who is from their tribe and who knows everything about their norms, their culture and their tradition. So the youth of Buari are now protesting on the street, calling on the government to intercede on their behalf, to intercede and help them so that they can continue with the one king that they have. So I'm going to play the video for you guys to watch and see what I am actually talking about. Watch the video. Right, the people of Buari Area Council of Abuja are protesting alleged imposition of Sarkim Buari on the people by the Federal Capital Territory Authority displaying different placards to express their dissatisfaction. The people say they already have a king in Buari known as Esu Buari that bears traditional responsibility of the entire Buari, but alleged that there are attempts to install another king who is a settler and not of Bagi tribe. They're calling on the FCT authorities to retrace its step uh, so as not to uh, puncture the fragile peace in the Buari Area Council. History of the world. There's no way two kings are ruling in one community. But in Buari, we have two kings. The most painful part is that the second class king is not our tribe. He's a quarter man from Ninja State. And we, that we are the predominantly baggy people, the owner of the land, we are the third class. We have written a series of letters to the Honorable Minister appealing to him that the Buari chiefdom should be divided into two, so that one part should be given to the other man, who is a quarter man, maybe one of the community that quarter people are residing. All oh, that we are seeing. It is not happening the way we want. Buari, as we all know, is for the baggies. I am not disputing the fact that we have coral people, indigenous coral people in Buari area council. We have them as uh, uh, heading Kao district, Sherry district, and Dusi Alaji. What we are simply saying, since Buari is for the baggies, give us our chiefdom. And then give the coral their yeah, chiefdom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let him rule over his people since they have the same tradition, the same culture, the same norms and same beliefs. Let us, the baggy, who have our own different tradition, rule ourselves. 
You cannot ask an Igbo man to go be a chief custodian of the Yoruba tradition. It doesn't happen. So this is what is wrong. And we are asking the FCT minister to do the needful. So you can see that what these people are agitating for is their right because they truly want a leader that understands them, a leader that knows their culture and tradition, a leader that knows their, their language, someone that they can rely on. And they are saying that they can't afford to have two kings. It's impossible for two kings to be ruling in one community. You understand what I'm saying? It's going to be impossible. So that is why the community of Buari are calling on the federal government to intercede on their behalf so as to remove the new king being imposed on them, someone that is not from their tribe, someone that does not understand their tradition, someone that does not understand their customs, just like a stranger ruling them as king, it is impossible. So ladies and gentlemen, that is the news we have for you on our today's news segment. Please, if you love this video, do not forget to give us a thumbs up. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more videos and also do not forget to come back for more videos because this channel is there to give you the latest on what is trending in Nigeria. Thank you very, very much for taking out your time to watch my video from the beginning to the end. And I say, may God bless you all. Enjoy the rest of your day. Goodbye.